Yeah. I mean, you, you still enjoyed uh, the World Cup, yeah. and you're sounding like you've been stuffed. Come it, on. It, it was fun to finally have you no know, one summer. We had the uh, African the Women's uh, Nations yeah. Cup, and then we also had World the World Cup. Cup. And it, it's good. It wasn't that totally dry throughout exactly. the summer. Exactly. Exactly. I know. I know <laughs> you're talking. So. I know you're champion at the pizza, but unfortunately, um, we're not going to be starting uh, with um, you know the action because it's starting with this uh, controversy. Uh, started off by Dario Murray the general manager of the Houston Rockets, a tweet uh, that showed support for anti-government protesters in Hong Kong. And that has seriously backfired. I mean, the fallout is incredible. And um, I don't know where this is going to end. I mean, we can start going through uh, everything that's happened right now. Just uh, an example of a few fallouts uh, from that tweet uh, from Daryl Morey. Uh, the, M the NBA Cares event uh, in Shanghai involving the Los Angeles Lakers I was cancelled on Wednesday just hours yeah. before it was scheduled to begin. Uh, there's also a story from Chinese TV uh, dropping the preseason yeah, games exactly. that were supposed, supposed to be played uh, in China. They're not going to be showing that one. And they also say they are reviewing all its corporations and exchanges involving the NBA, all because of one tweet. All because of one tweet. And the ripple effect is just so much. It's wow. unimaginable. Obviously, we know it. sometimes politics and sports, they come together. And one man's views, because he's with the Rockets, is now termed to be the views of the old NBA, which is what Adam Siva has come now to clarify. You know, we, we stayed silent and it felt that we're not in support of him mm. on this side. And it stayed and also on the Chinese side, it felt like we're supporting his views. So Adam Siva had to, you know, that press conference yesterday in Japan where the Raptors and Rockets played and had to clarify the issues. I think one thing I took away from that was when he said late in the, the, the interview, he said... Sport has a way to throw light on political issues. issues. And that's what we've seen. Because if it wasn't an NBA executive, nobody would be talking about this. Mm. People really didn't care about the Hong Kong protests until he did that. And everyone in China and in America is talking about it, about it suddenly. It. Obviously, there's, there was no light on that. On my, <laughs> on my all of your thoughts uh, for a couple of minutes, uh, we're just going to go on this break. we'll come back, we'll continue our, discu our discussion on this NBA Twitter opera that is currently rocking the NBA world. Welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. We're still talking the NBA. I'm not on the court right now, just off the court. A bit of politics uh, that has uh, gotten into the mix. And uh, on the um, Dario Mori tweeted, right? You know, uh, the show support for anti government protesters, right? The opera was immediate uh, on social media. Yeah. And he apologized, deleted the tweets. Then what does the commissioner do? Adam Silva goes on, I mean, at a press conference. Uh, to talk about anyway, let's, see. let's hear what the commissioner has to say about all that has been happening since that tweet uh, from Daryl Murray. We are not apologizing for Daryl exercising his freedom of expression. I regret again having communicated directly with many friends in China that so many people are upset, including millions and millions of our fans. What I've said in that statement is the long-held values of the NBA are to support freedom of expression, and certainly freedom of expression by members of the NBA community. And in this case, Daryl Morey, as the general manager of the Houston Rockets, enjoys that right as one of our employees. Um, what, what I also try to suggest is I understand that there are consequences from that exercise of, of in essence, his freedom of speech, and, you know, we, we will have to live with those consequences. It's my hope that for our Chinese fans and our partners in China, they will see those remarks in the context of now a three-decade, if not longer, relationship. All right, then, Adam Silva, NBA commissioner, insisting on freedom of expression, basically backing uh, Dara Morris' rights. Art of freedom of expression and on the way. this yeah. now okay. has now escalated the whole thing again now. This particular presser from uh, Adam Silver. It's now the question of what would the Chinese do next? Obviously they cancelled the NBA Cares tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, normally the whole fan affair about the NBA preseason tournament it has been huge. This time mm -hmm. it's not that uh, people are excited time. about it. Mm. Once more, you know, NBA has invested a lot for the past ten years in Chinese market to make it grow building basketball courts over there, giving out broadcast rights for free to people so they can stream the NBA games and show it live there. And right now, all of these guys are backing out of it. So they're a very huge market. They're losing out on it. And lots of money will go down the drain. But, you know, 
Adam Silva is saying that just because you know money and business is in the way doesn't mean we'll throw our right and expression of speech, right. which, which also I should love be protected. about him. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Because I didn't see any reason why the several celebrities right there saying that the fans night to night they will not be going. Mm. I mean, it's just a tweet and the guy apologized after that. And I think you can okay, it's yeah, sports. Yeah. But the best bet is why not just stay away from politics? I think anything that involves politics and yeah, a sports person sometimes Things that are controversial. I think it's better for you to stay off. If he had not tweeted that, he exactly. wouldn't be having well, these which issues. Is the, which is the best move? Um, even the players are even coming out. James Harden uh, yesterday yeah, was saying said, that we supporting. love the Chinese yeah. fans, you know, and all that. We really don't hate the Chinese people, but trying to, you know, <laughs> walk like, around it. Stay, it's yeah. already done. It's already can, done. We, can, done. can we leave it? Yeah, let's talk about what happened uh, early hours of this it? morning. Yeah, yeah, I what thought you were going to listen to night. James Harden as well. James Harden. Okay, okay talking about yeah, he's supporting Adam Silver, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get to listen that's to him because he's yeah. standing with his, his president, I mean, his commissioner, obviously. Yeah, we all have freedom of speech. Uh, that's the world we live in. You know, everybody should. Uh, how they feel and, and, and their thought process, be able to speak it. You know, obviously some people are going to feel some type of way, some people are going to agree. That's just the world we live in. Um, and so, you know, um, you know I'm, I'm here for Adam Silver. Yeah, that's him right there supporting his commissioner, which is obvious. Now, let's talk about the it's, game they played. I mean, it's kind it's of I just can't wait to get away. <laughs> yes, because I Raptors, I mean, yesterday you were here <laughs> talking about the <laughs> fact that, look, Kawhi Leonard left and all the guys at Jeremy Lin left and everybody yeah. is leaving and all that. And maybe it might be difficult for them. But there was a statement they made on Tuesday saying that, look, these guys may be gone, but we can find another way to also win a big. And one of the big ones I felt that they won last night, yes, uh, Yesterday morning. Yesterday yeah, morning, afternoon, yeah. Midday, afternoon, yeah, midday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to check the time difference <laughs> right now. It was actually the one against Houston Rocket, despite the fact that they paraded the likes of uh, James Harden, of course, and Russell Westbrook and Harden are getting in about 21 points for these guys in the first quarter. This is your first preseason playing together with Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I love that combination. It, it, it's something we've been looking forward to, asking will Westbrook combine with Harden. Obviously, they played in the early days of their career mm. at OKC. Right now, those guys are big, they're superstars. Mm -hmm. Westbrook has to understand that this is Harden's team to the Rockets, so he's coming more like a guy to play back up, uh, more like a, a Robin uh, to, to his Batman. Mm -hmm. So he has to understand that this is Harden's team. Both of okay. them have to play well and combine well to win that ring that they've, they've not gotten for their career. And I think that Westbrook would come down. We know who Westbrook is. He, he can be a one-man show, want to do everything himself. Harden can also be that guy. But both men want it to be one man show. They have to play together. Yeah. I think yesterday had him once more, four points at the end of the game. We know that's what he's going to do. Westbrook chipped him, what, 13 points in that one. Six, then six, going six. forward, he can do better. But talking about the Raptors, who are without Kawhi Leonard, one man who went unnoticed last season but did a lot of work for them, Pascal Siakam. Once more yesterday, double double, 24 points, 11 rebound. Mm -hmm. This is the guy that they have to look at to the one to lead them forward without Kawhi Leonard because one year on his contract, they're looking at how they want to tie him down to a max deal. They want to keep him happy because they know that with Pascal Siakam and that team are playing well, they can have a chance of maybe going to the finals once more this year. Um, interesting, cool. uh, you mentioned uh, mm. Pascal Siakam, most improved uh, player in the yeah, NBA last season. Mm -hmm. uh, last season. And surely without Kawhi, he has to be the go-to person. I agree with you on that one as well. So, so I, I imagine um, Kyle Lowry and Pascal Siakam, those two guys will have to like really, really play well. Uh, this season, of course, the others have to contribute as well. So they still mark us all, yeah. uh, you know, with all this experience and on the back of winning the World Cup. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad side. And I think they will easily make the playoffs uh, from the Eastern Conference yes. because it's not, a, it's not the most uh, competitive. But it's what they do afterwards uh, that, um, uh, that I really, okay. really uh, wonder. But we'll see how it pans out for the uh, Toronto Raptors. Uh, the season is just so close by now. We can't wait for it to tip off. From the NBA now, let's move on with the show. Uh, let's talk about uh, Arsene Wenger, right? So, uh, what's up with Arsene Wenger? Yeah, before we do Arsene Wenger, I think we have something we'll skip, right? The NWP. Okay, <laughs> NWP first. All and, uh, right. Talking then. about the promotional playoff, we talked about it was starting yesterday, and now we got the result for you guys. Match day one, where you have Pelican Stars and Police Machine. So, Pelican winning 4-1. And Moja Queens and Olori Babes, Olori Babes winning by a lone goal. And today we are going to be having more games, or just the best two teams that obviously get into the top 
flight. It's, for today's games, we'll be having Olori Babes and uh, Pelican Stars. Kickoff time for that one is 1 p.m. And Police Machine and Moja Queens will also play at 3 p.m. Taking place in Lokoja. Okay, that's it for the Nigeria Women's Premier League promotional playoffs. Let's look this one, Asa Venga. Yeah, I'm missing you it, that's why. Wait. Yes. I'm missing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. game is missing mm -hmm. Asa Venga. I mean, um, it, it's how many years now since he's, got, he's been away from the game? About two about years. About two years yeah, now. Two years. And we didn't yeah. think it was going to be this long. We thought it was going to, like, go... Yeah, it's yeah, going two wow. years now. So, see, that time has flown by. <laughs> it's so uh, but that's not what we're... We'll talk about his future later on. Let's talk about... Uh, the award, that's Arsene Wenger there for you, receiving a standing ovation after being inducted into the Legends of Football Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in London. You'd mm -hmm. say it's well-deserved. I mean, he's had, an, he's had an outstanding career. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's only right he gets this kind of uh, <laughs> award. And um, it's good to see him looking very well. No stress. The football <laughs> stress, <laughs> trust me, it has a way of stressing him out. Yeah, it's getting younger. Fresh, you know. <laughs> And um, yeah, you RVP can see right there. RVP, you know, <laughs> helping to looking much older, by the way. By the way, he's looking much older. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. And he's trying to grow some beards or something like that. Oh, There's also a grave right there in front. Yeah, you know, this, this has got gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, and he's not even 40 yet. Okay, so some getting natural. I was yeah. honored uh, for his outstanding managerial career. Yeah. I saw him um, claim three Premier League titles, um, the unprecedented. Invincible season. Yeah. That one, I'm not sure anyone is going to do it. Maybe not in our lifetime. Not even the And a record, City. not even City, right? Liverpool? Not now. This year? I mean, you can't, you can't. Liverpool it's, this it's, season? It's, it's, it's tough, but I don't see them doing it. Oh, okay. I don't see them doing it. Wenger also won a record breaking seven FA Cups. That's remarkable stuff. Mm -hmm. I think no one can underestimate his impact to the game in, in the Premier League and in English football generally. I think he turned things around with Arsenal when he came in. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal years with them, about two decades there, and I think yeah. it was awesome for him. The brand of football he played was loved, you know, in his, in his early days, and it was, I think it was always great to watch Arsenal then. Henri Perez and he likes, he was the one in, that started the influx of French players into the Premier League, and I True. think he deserves to be on that, on that one, the Legend of Football Hall of Fame. And so, that's yeah. why one person, I mean, his greatest rival, talking Thank about you. Sir Les Ferguson, have been, Venga. you know, you know, yeah. <laughs> what? You want, you want to listen to Venga first? Okay, I want to listen to Sir Les Ferguson first, before I listen to Asa Venga, uh, right? Why? So let's uh, why hear is from Feg. Why, why is that? It's Feg, you know. Because it's Feg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very grateful for having been accepted in this country, because when I arrived, it was not obvious. And, uh, and uh, as well, I have a huge respect for this country because they have a big passion for the game. And uh, they are brave. And uh, when I think what Arsenal did when I arrived here, I think it was really brave. And I respect that. Give a chance to Mr. Nobody. He's not common in a big club uh, in Europe. And uh, this country has something special. I cannot even explain it why, but there's always something happening on the Saturdays that is exceptional, you know. And uh, still today, when I wake up, I must say, the first thing that comes into my head is the football, an interesting football game tonight on television. If that's the case, my day is okay. First of all, I'm sorry I'm not there tonight. I'd love to have been there for you to be honoured by Nordoff Robbins. It's a fantastic charity and I'm really proud of you taking part in it. And most of all, for the, the career you had as a manager at Arsenal, absolutely fantastic. You are an absolute legend and that's why it's called Legends Tonight. So, once again, I loved the, the competition against you. We had some great times and it's wonderful you're getting this award tonight. So good luck. My blessing with you. Okay, we heard from uh, Asavinga first before we actually heard from Sir Alice Ferguson. A good one. I love the fact that, I mean, despite the fact that they are no longer involved in football, <laughs> it's still friends. No, yeah. I mean, actually, it is the <laughs> fact that they're no longer in football that has made them come closer because they're no longer rivals. Uh, Ferguson is it's retired really... and Wenger is retired. I mean, that's what you do when you're a rival. So rivals, you never leaving. Leaving. But when Ferguson to, said he yeah. loved the friendly rivalry friendly, with yeah. him. You know, friendly, it was yeah. awesome going yeah, to the store with the man that he felt was 
so close to you in terms of football tactics mm -hmm. and all that. And yeah. I think he enjoyed all those times. He did. Yeah, but they went, what Remember I'm saying is he was then... actually given a flag, I mean, by United. Fergie presented it to him when he was leaving, when he came to Old Trafford. That's what I'm saying. Left. That's because they're no longer rivals. Trust me, <laughs> <laughs> they were still managing United and, uh, and Arsenal. They, that's never going to happen. Yeah, sure, they, they were no, never, never friends. What about, they remember Josie, what he used to say, that usually they usually have a wine together. They're cordial. They're cordial, but they're not like friends. They're not buddies. And now why, you can sit you down and, and pay. Professional relationship, right? Professional relationship. <laughs> relationship okay, relationship. let's leave it. You want us to talk about his future, right? Uh, uh, yeah. What he wants to do. I don't know what is he up to. I mean, there's, okay. there's been loads of uh, links. Uh, he actually revealed um, prior to this award as well. So he's turned down several EPL yeah. offers because he's too Arsenal, in quotes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. I, I don't think he can come back to the Premier League, nah. possibly elsewhere. And we thought maybe he would be in somewhere in the French League on or so, nothing. A few national team jobs here and there, especially in Asia. At one time, was you know being linked to the Qatar job ahead of the World Cup, but nothing has pan out. It seems like he might not really come back to football yeah. on the that field. Way. Maybe in the, uh, in the boardroom somewhere. Are you sure about that? It's, if he comes back to football, I guess that is where he might end up turning up, but not on the field of play itself. I don't think okay. so. Anyways, let's... yeah, because what he said here he said he doesn't really like the administrative there aspects of it. There but he go. talked about different things that have changed in football, and he really wants to be part of that. Let's hear from him. You know, I, I would like to share what I've learned, but in an efficient way. So I, I hate administration, and uh, I think I can. Uh, I learned a lot about human beings, and uh, football has today a fantastic responsibility in the world. We live in a in, in a world where sport has become the religion all over the world, and uh, world football has a huge responsibility now and. Uh, if I can help a little bit, why not? Okay, now, what do you think from what he just said? Right. You know, he talked about human beings and understanding mm -hmm. human beings. Yeah. Like, you know, off he said sports psychology or the likes, maybe an ambassador for football going from places to places, mm -hmm. trying to preach the, the, how do I put it now, the yeah. word of the game across yeah, the, the world. And I think he's someone that can do that. He's loved across the world and then Respected exactly well. groom new talents all over. I think it's something that he wants to do. He enjoys that more than being in an administrative position. <laughs> which you said he hates. <laughs> anyway, I mean, yeah I, I, yeah, I agree with you as well too by saying uh, uh, he, he doesn't look like he'll come back to be a manager. He doesn't look like he'll return to the dugout. I think that's just saying, which is just, even though the towards the end of his career uh, at the Arsenal wasn't too great, I don't think it takes anything away. It wasn't that bad, was it? Wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't really, really bad. bad. I, wasn't do you really want bad. me to remind you? I mean, okay, they missed out of the, the Champions League two seasons back to back. I think right. you guys That's are... That's just it. I mean, for he had, 20 he had years, been they punching always... above his weight previously. Qualifying for the Champions League year in, year out. Even right. with, with, some... with those stringent budgets. I think, I think you guys have forgotten uh, towards the very end of the Arsene Wenger uh, okay. you know, career at Arsenal. Yeah. There were protests. Yeah, the fans. There were fans, fans actually you know, protesting fans against accident. Arsenal with, like, seriously, <laughs> could you forget that? Okay, it was yeah. a bad ending because to his career at Arsenal. It wasn't good at all. No one wanted to see those pictures uh, and the chants outside of the stadium calling for Arsene Wenger to step down. Yeah, so, they did. Okay, and Arsenal, right, are they really better off now? Not okay. yet. We'll wait and see. Let's go to another legend. Zlatan. Zlatan. Ibrahimovic. <laughs> one legend to the other. This one... I mean, he's an absolute legend. There's not two ways uh, about it. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, the Swedish great, the all-time top scorer, mm -hmm. has been honored with a statue in his hometown of mm -hmm. Malmo. And that's the statue for you right there. Uh, it's a bronze statue, 8.9 feet tall, and weighs approximately a ton. It took four years to uh, construct uh, this particular statue. And uh, Zlatan himself it was there like too. him. Yeah. yeah, I think this has to be... The best I've seen, the closest. Yeah, Ronaldo should be jealous. Uh, he will. <laughs> he will, I'm sure. I'm sure he will. <laughs> I think they need to call Peter Lind. <laughs> no? That's the guy that constructed... The sculptor. Uh, yeah, the sculptor uh, for this uh, uh, Zlatan. I think there's a resemblance there. Yeah, yeah see the, you, I can see the really starch. There. Very, very yeah, much. Yeah, the beard as well, too. But, Everything. Uh, you'd say it's well-deserved. This is where it all started uh, for Zlatan Malmo. Malmo, yeah. Uh, where he's got loads of goals uh, before going to Ajax. And he's not looked back uh, since, uh, back since then. Um, Zlatan being immortalized. 
He, he deserves it. Uh, for I don't think there's any Swedish player that has been as phenomenal as him in the history of Swedish football. Mm. And he's sort of put Swedish football on the map. His talent is remarkable. Even at 38, see what he's still doing in the MLS. And it feels like he can still even do well in Europe Top 5 League if he wants if to. If he wants to. So he's a phenomenal player, one way to respect it. Kids growing up will know that this is the man. This is the proud one, as I like to call him, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Awesome striker. Awesome. Awesome indeed. Let's get to listen to... Uh, Zlatan, what he had to say after the unveiling of the statue uh, in Malmo. It's got a very good message for uh, the fans out there. With this statue, it will be a symbol for all the people out there who doesn't feel welcome, who doesn't feel they fit in, who doesn't feel they look like everybody else, that, that it is possible. And I'm a living proof of that because if I can do it, everybody can do it. I normally say I... I ate Sweden for breakfast, I ate Europe for lunch, and I took the world by dinner. So that is how I describe the statue. But, but anyway, if, you, if all the people out there feel they, they need energy, they just have to come to the statue and they will get that energy and they will feel that vibration that anything is possible. Amazing job has been done, and it's back to my town, Malmö, where everything started actually started out here when I was running, kicking this ball, and, and now I get a statue where all the other people can see me, see me stay there forever. I don't know how long I will live, but I know one thing, the statue will stay forever. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. Before we look at the papers, uh, let's talk about the amputee eagles uh, at the AFCON, amputee AFCON, and they seem to be doing... Uh, Absolutely very, very well. well. Uh, they took on host nation Angola uh, yesterday and ended in a 2 0 draw. Kennedy Izeji and Maru Grima scoring the two goals for Nigeria. And as a result of that draw, uh, they top that particular group with 13 points. It's impressive what these guys are doing uh, because we all know how uh, unappreciated exactly. uh, they, exactly. they are. You know. And in, anytime you see results like this and hear all these guys' achievements in competitions, mm -hmm. you're just excited for them because despite all the challenges, oh, too many. they walk through that and still go out there to impress. And, and it's just pitiable that they come back and they're still not appreciated. Nothing is still done for them to help them move their career forward. But well, I'm happy that they find joy in going out there to represent the country mm -hmm. and making themselves proud by these you know, great performances out there. And Angola are not just the host, they're the world champions. It's remarkable stuff. Yeah. Anyways. Imagine sort of investments going into those guys, making yeah. sure that they stay at that level. Mm. Uh, and I think that's something our Nigerian government, if you want to keep on bankrolling sports here, you have to do so to the latter and make sure that these guys see the full benefits of it. Mm. And we're not having that here. Yeah, the truth, but, they, they really don't remember all the sport. They just remember Super Eagles and that's it. That, that's something but, I'm will, noticed, that, really. but the issue is even the Super Eagles, they've got their own issues as well. They've got their own challenges as well. So you know they go to competitions and they complain about bonuses. It, it, it's, it's, so it's, it's, everywhere. it's everywhere. Yeah, at least, so, uh, at least they prepare them, right? These ones, they don't even prepare them. Hmm. That's the thing. I mean, they borrow money to fly out to Angola. I mean, it's... Okay, can we look at the papers, please? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before we go, <laughs> uh, the, the amputee Eagles are in the semi-finals. Uh, yeah. So there's two steps away mm -hmm. from... Uh, from, you know, perhaps uh, becoming uh, champions. I uh, wish them all the best and for the rest of the competition. Let's look at the papers now. Of course, the papers... Um, it's kind of, I mean, there's no uh, European football to talk about. It's an international <laughs> window. Uh, so, of course, I expect to see a lot of stories about uh, teams and countries getting yeah. ready to play. Uh, if it's uh, Euro 2020 qualifiers or even international friendlies, it's loads of them on the papers this morning. Let's start with complete sports. Of course, we're all building and counting down to that match between Nigeria and Brazil on Sunday. And you can see the very big and bold headline there is Eagles storm Singapore uh, for Brazil. Raw leads Chukweze Aziz. I was in into Lion City. Super Eagles to lodge here at Five Star Hotel. Uh, <laughs> of course, it has to be now. <laughs> Goalie, goalkeeper is in while bathroom staff jet out today. Can, I mean, this is fantastic. Okay, yeah, fantastic. 16 hours flights, right? Yeah. You'll get there like Thursday or yeah, <laughs> then no, Friday. Okay, uh, Brazil is also playing one game before they play exactly. the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Yeah. So, so that cool. perhaps explains why they are already in camp. Mm -hmm. All mm -hmm. right, let's move on from uh, Nigeria and Brazil. Now let's talk about Tomori. Uh, we just got an invitation into the um, 
England set up. I say no doubt over snobby Nigeria for England. I told you guys, Aram Sis is always wanted to play for the Three Lions. This should not come as a surprise to you. On I'm man. not surprised. Like, I knew they were always going to play for England. If, if they got the that's chance. That's where their heart is. Exactly. That's where they grew up. That's where their affinity lies. It has never been Nigeria. And except something strange happened where England never considered them. Yeah. Maybe they said, okay, fallback option has to be Nigeria. But once they're on the minds of England, they were definitely representing England. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Tell definitely. me, yeah, first choice England, second choice England, mm. third choice England. There you go. So, so. where did the, the, the old... Um, okay, I think that started from the NFF, I remember. Yeah, way back I mean, then. one time had a meeting with him, to talk with the picture with and him and Abraham. I yeah. think it was like a year ago or yeah. thereabouts. Yeah. Can they, they just start, start the league so that we start boring players, please? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, wish these guys all the best, uh, Tomori and Tommy. If a soldier's sack will cost United £7 million. Pounds. Yeah, it's, that's cheap. Not as much as yeah, the 20. Just, uh, that's, that's cheap. They paid I mean. Chelsea Mario. But yeah. this, this, this issue, I mean, it's contrasting stories about this. Uh, uh, reports are saying it's going to get the backing uh, to continue the rebuild. Others are saying. Which, uh, which, which players? <laughs> the ones that have been in yeah, Premier League for the, 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 the thing was, is this, I, I think the, the board one. hasn't done so well. They've not covered themselves in the glory themselves. And I think they know this to an extent, which is why they're not giving him any sticks at the moment. Because if you want him to exceed, excel, you have to give him what he needs to work. Mm. Imagine a, 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 coach, a club as big as United allowed Sanchez and Lukaku go and there were no replacement for that. Mm. You expect that the team Herrera, will suffer. in the middle. Exactly. And they're no suffering replacement. for that at the moment. There were so many shortlisted players they needed, they wanted to sign, they couldn't get, get anyone to come. So eh, they only got Daniel James and who else? Even Longstaff, they couldn't get Longstaff from Newcastle. Mm. Yeah. So obviously the, the, the board, like you said, they have their own uh, share of the blame. Uh, but the managers, well, you're, you know the box always stopped. He, uh, my issue, my issue with those guys is only he's a reactive manager. Mm -hmm. He's not the guy to go on the front foot and decide this is what he wants to do to dominate a game. He waits and see what's happening and then he reacts to that, which is what he did in the past games. Last season that against works. PSG, exactly. It works for him, but yeah. it can't work for you every time, time, especially yeah. against a smaller side, mm -hmm. because he'll sit back and want to see what you bring to them. Yeah. And if what you're bringing is not. Uh, big enough, they'll counter you and then win. We saw Crystal Palace do that at Old Trafford. Right. They, they went, off, went away with a win. True. I think teams will keep on doing that against yeah. them. Mm. And they keep okay. losing. Still on complete sports, um, Mustafi rejects that worst defender label. Come on, it's not that bad. Uh, Arsenal fans need to relax about that guy. Uh, Bill wants to leave Real Madrid next summer. He's tired of being uh, Are you not tired of that story? Can he just leave if he wants to go? <laughs> he was asked to leave, go to China, collect 500 quid. He said he wasn't going to go. Interesting okay. one here before we go to uh, Sports and Sun. Ferguson urges United to appoint Allegri. Mm. When did you say that? I said that in London yesterday. <laughs> that <laughs> man is the best man for the job. Allegri. Yes. But yeah, you think but, I mean, but it's going to have a clear out. I mean, those, those, those players you have right now will be your squad players, and you get new players that will play the game, he, right? Obviously. He needs, he needs that. He needs to sign. Whoever comes to Man United needs signs. That's the problem. That's but the problem. Because Jose, or maybe when they need there a sporting well director in the first place, so then you bring him Allegri. Of course, that is very important as well, too, because the man in charge is an accountant make, making all these footballing decisions. Would, would Ward it's cannot take work. them forward as regards competent signings? Yeah. He can't. So they need a sporting director yes. and they need Allegri. But trust me, I don't think Allegri would touch this he shouldn't touch it, with yeah. a long pole right now. Absolutely. Because of all the things you've said. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think he might want to take this year out and see mm. what's happening and then come back maybe next year in football. More then like United will be battling relegation. <laughs> okay, our Sporting Sun right here. And Sporting Sun International Friendly is saying that Super Eagles land in Singapore. The likes of Usime Chukweze made poster boys. Okay, that's Usime what they're saying. Usime Chukweze made poster boys. Poster boys, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, going forward, these are the, these are the yeah. faces of the exactly. Super Eagles. Yeah. Well, Osimhen yeah. recently mm. shot set for Ligon Player of the yeah. Month. How, how is also big of a poster boy can he get? It, it's Osimhen, man. He's mm. doing so well recently, so it's mm. him. Yes, right. Right. Okay, Salah wins Red's Goal of the Month. Yeah, deserve. Uh, big goal? Sam says, uh, Big Sam says, uh, my United may suffer relegation. Right? It's not news now. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're in trouble. They're, they're just two points two adrift points of it, right, to international yeah, break. Trouble, and when man. they come back, they're facing Liverpool. I, I think I think relegation might be a fast stretch. I okay. think it might be a fast stretch. No, so like, they're just two points they'll off battle it. They'll battle it. They'll battle, battle it. it. It's <laughs> not saying they're going to battle it. Yes, they are two points off it now. And I mean, when they play so Liverpool, they lose to, to Liverpool. They're going to drop into they that zone. They could draw Liverpool. 
Yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah that's another happen. thing yeah. because they're, they're really not consistent. Home, you know, yeah. We saw them last season, even when Liverpool were hot, and they were not so much. United you know, were better last season. This season, there how was. many games have they won? They were. Even with there all those injuries. They won two matches. Even yeah. with all those injuries, they drew, they drew against Liverpool. So That was last season. That was last, last season. Last season wasn't as bad as... Uh, this this season is the worst They won two games in eight. Two in eight. Leicester and Chelsea. And Chelsea, I still can't believe how that result happened. And it's called just how many goals? Eight, nine goals all season? And four of them was against Chelsea. Okay, exactly. We're against Chelsea. Sporting Life is the last one this morning for review. Visa Wahala can't stop game. Team mm. hits Singapore today. Okay, yeah, still battle of it. Ah. Chukweze will destroy Marcelo. Can we stop <laughs> all this? <laughs> <laughs> Just play the game. <laughs> Campus, Osime will, Osime will move to bigger club. Yeah, yeah. obviously. It's going to be for yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. United, try and splash some money for this guy and get someone to score goals for you. Mm. Chelsea prepares Tony 210 million offer to land in Neymar. Uh, you know, this Neymar. story is not even believable. Nah. Uh, it's, oh. it's not even believable, right? Nah. It's not possible. Mm, yeah, well, I, I really don't. When I saw that this morning, I was like, where is this coming yeah. from? I, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Silly season starts yeah. early. Okay. Uh, Wenger wants Leon job. Okay. Wenger, Leon. Leon has sacked their manager. Then? AC Milan no, sacked their manager. To Wenger. So. I don't think he's going anywhere near <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't think so. It's not going to happen. Uh, okay. Well, Aribo no? is fit, apparently, and uh, he's got the head guard on, on Sports and Life. It's Joe Aribo. Mm. I think it's good to have him. I, I was impressed with how he played against Ukraine in the first match with Spurs. He was very exuberant, covered a lot of grass on the field of play. Ha very, very good work rate, and I think he's mm. quite technically good fit too. So, good to have this guy fit and around us playing forward. Okay, that's it on the program. I want to thank you, Onome Appeal, for coming on the show. Always a pleasure being here. Appreciate right. your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. I'm Cecilia Morgan. I'm Tyler Salam. Bye for now.